Hey, what's up, chitheads? Welcome back to the channel. Well, today is my 45th birthday. I'm feeling a bit nostalgic today, and uh, I'm going to take you guys on a little bit of a tour guide through Antioch, California. Now, if any of you guys aren't familiar, I live in Antioch, California. This is a suburb of San Francisco, about 45 minutes east of San Francisco. There's been a few famous people that come out of this town over the years. Jeremy Newberry, the Star Center from the 49ers, uh, the guy who wrote Sharknadoes from Antioch. Uh, yeah, the list is pretty thin, I'm not gonna lie. But one of the really uh, prominent people you probably haven't heard of is there's a, a rapper named Woody that came from Antioch. And uh, he never really made mainstream success because a lot of his music is like heavily gang related. Woody's already hated for the fact I'm gang related. And uh, so it never really got out, but his most popular song is a song called Norte Sidon. Put it on this video because it's probably copyright protected, but uh, I'll leave a link in the description. But you know, around here, it's really popular and he grew up roughly around the same time I did from the 1990s. So I'm gonna show you some of the real life locations where some of the stuff from those songs took place and where they used to hang out as well as some other infamous spots in Antioch where, uh, you know, some things happen that you may not have known have happened right here in my own backyard. But yeah, you see the bat, you see this town in the background of my videos, but today maybe let's learn a little bit. There's a couple of firsts for me, you guys might be wondering, hey, why are you wearing a Tampa Bay hat? Well, it's not a Tampa Bay hat. This is the Talaria Boys hat. That's right, guys. I've officially joined the Talaria Boys. Yeah, you see it's like a T and a B. You know, I used to think I was down with the E Riders, Look, that's a lowercase r, but you know what? Since I got this Talaria MX-5, I've jumped ship and now I'm a full-fledged member of the Talaria boys. So like I'm down with my boy Lance and AJ and Chris Kirkpatrick. Wait, that's in sync. But I'll explain all about that in a future video. And another first is I'm wearing this Dixon flannel. Everyone and their brother buys these things. It's the first one I got. And uh, yeah, so far I like it, but you know, let me know in the comments. What do you guys think? Let's go ahead and get out there, okay? Come on, let's go. We're in downtown Antioch. Now downtown is drastically different from a lot of the town. Downtown was, you know, obviously the original part of town established, I believe in the late 1800s, or early 1900s. The downtown area, I love it here. It's got old Victorian homes, houses with basements. These uh, buildings have been around forever. You know, it's got the old timey, the El Campanile Theater. It's got a really cool vibe in downtown. I really like it here. But what sets Antioch apart from the normal suburbs is the landscape here. Uh, what you guys probably don't see as much is Antioch is situated right on the water. This is the, uh, technically I believe this is the American River or something, but everyone here calls it the Delta. And uh, we'll go right there right now. So Antioch is right on the water. Like in theory, Antioch has got everything that it takes to make an awesome city. Uh, it's got water, it's got a variety. We have the hills, uh, there's Black Diamond Mines, there's regional parks, there's miles and miles of like really nice bike trails out here. But the sad thing is, we have all this waterfront here and almost none of it is usable. So there's this public pier here and a restaurant, but if you always notice, if you look at the actual shoreline, almost none of the shoreline is usable because you have these railroad tracks that run right down downtown there's not a single house in Antioch that's actually on the water. There used to be one when I was a kid, but it's been torn down. So all the waterfront in Antioch is either, it's either industrial or it's a couple of uh, restaurants, but there's absolutely no usable waterfront. It's pretty sad. So unfortunately, most of these waterfront areas have been uh, taken over by the homeless. But if you notice here, this is what I'm saying, all this waterfront here, none of it's accessible for normal people. You might be able to get out there and fish, but you can't swim, there's uh, none of it. And then you see here, just homeless people galore everywhere. And unfortunately, you know, with the increased homeless population comes on crime, mostly theft. The other day I was riding for a review and I was riding down the tracks and there was a guy walking with no shirt on the other side of the tracks, just staring at me. And he was holding a knife like this long in his hand, just staring at me with like a glazed over look in his eyes. And it's like, this is just crazy. I grew up here in this town in a, it wasn't always like this. You know, uh, as a matter of fact, um, where we just left by that restaurant, there's been two murders, two murders down there. And right by the train station we just drove through, there was a murder across the street. So that's three murders in that one short little block right there within the last year. That's since I started doing my bike reviews. So it's like, yeah, you guys might look at this stuff and be like, oh, this doesn't look too bad. No, uh, it's, it's pretty bad. You see these gates right here? This is the Antioch Marina here. They put these gates up here because it got so bad with sideshows at night, they have to block off this parking lot. 
So there was, there's sideshows through here. You can see there's just tire marks all over the place. And it's not necessarily the sideshows that are the problem. It's the, the stuff that comes along with it. There's shootings galore. I live uh, fairly close to here. And one night there was a car chase out of here. Uh, gunshots were fired. And you know, you live in a bad neighborhood. You get used to hearing gunshots. I hear them. I just go back to sleep. But what got me with this one is there was just tons of gunshots. There was probably 30 to 40, and I could hear the bullets whizzing by. It's like that to me, okay, it's like, okay, that's a bit much. I can handle the, uh, there's some gunshots in the distance type of stuff, but when you hear them whizzing by, that's a, that's a bit unnerving. If you look up Antioch, Google it, it's not, uh, you're not gonna find too many positive stories behind Antioch, except uh, there's a, really successful great looking youtuber from Antioch I guess his name like it does bike reviews or something this is a beautiful town has a lot going for it but it's just been plagued with bad management for years and uh sadly not much is going right here okay so this restaurant right here another historical event in Antioch this restaurant is called Smith's Landing now but it used to be called Humphreys this is one of the two restaurants on or, you know one of the few places you can actually go to the waterfront here and this place is called Humphreys because in the 1980s, a humpback well was coming through here in the Delta and got stuck. And his name, they nicknamed him Humphrey the Whale because he's a humpback. And it was a real big event through here. Whale watchers poured in to get a glimpse of Humphrey. Not only was he studied, but people made music for him as well. Humphrey, you're They eventually got him turned around and he went back out. I believe that actually happened right before I moved to Antioch. I moved to Antioch in like 84, 85. It's Humphrey the Well, and he traveled these very waters right here. Only a couple famous people that I know of came through Antioch. I think Brie Larson's mom went to high school here for a couple of years. Uh, Jeremy Newberry from the 49ers went here. We're fairly close. So, but Woody is like one of the biggest things that come out of Antioch because uh, he's a homegrown story and a lot of his music never made mainstream because it's heavily gang related but a lot of his music is based in reality and real events that happen and before his music career took off and guys let me tell you i don't have first-hand knowledge a lot of this stuff i'm going to be repeating a lot of hearsay and what i saw in this awesome documentary i saw on youtube and i'll link that in the uh, description of this video if you want to watch it it's very interesting woody was a norteño gangster and there's like northerners typically a hispanic gang uh, he wasn't hispanic he was white with red hair his name's ryan wood a couple years older than me i knew of him but i didn't like know him personally but their gang was named the west 20th street norteños is what the, the news labeled them a lot of the time they hang out right here uh, at the end of this F Street here. This is where the old railroad line they used to go to the Black Diamond Mines. The old railroad line ended right here. And uh, this is where they were known for hanging out right here. It's just where I don't want to spend too much time because it's all shady here now. But this is where they'd hang out. There's pictures of them from their albums and stuff right here. There was a bunch of their cars, like tons of their friends were out here, right in here in this parking lot. One of the big events that kind of like started this whole thing is Woody and their friends are at this party in Pittsburgh and the Serenos they knew they were at this house in Pittsburgh because Pittsburgh was their neighborhood and uh, some of the Antioch guys were over there and they drove by the house they shot up the house and a guy named Ray Ramirez was shot brother of Carlos Ramirez and Carlos Ramirez his nickname was Blackbird he was a member of the West Twumpsters as they're called he was hit by gunfire and he was immediately paralyzed from the waist down that prompted, this is on April 17th, 1994, and that prompted a retaliation. And what happened was that very same night, there was a quinceanera going on at this building right here, the Veterans Memorial Building here on 6th Street in Antioch, California. Uh, unfortunately, and you know, in retrospect, you find out that this had absolutely nothing to do with that whole conflict, except there was one Sereno member here at this place. So somehow they found out, they cased out this place, it was about 1 a.m. Two people stormed in here, they started shooting, and unfortunately one person was killed, five people were struck right here in this building on April 17th, 1994. The person that died had absolutely nothing to do with it. So from what I understand, it sounds like they believe uh, Carlos Ramirez was one of the suspects and the other one, the person who was in jail, his name is Gabe, uh, I might be saying that, pronouncing that wrong, but. 
He's still in jail at this very date, but the rolling theory is the fact that he actually didn't do it. He took the rap and he didn't snitch and he's still in jail. Theory is that actually it was Woody who did it. Guys, just think of mine, I'm not, I'm repeating what other people have said. There's multiple videos on this topic. I'm just kind of summarizing it. I'm not trying to put words in anyone's mouth, but yeah, so it's the theory is that Brian Wood actually did it. Gabriel took the, the rap for it and he's in jail. And then uh, unfortunately Woody in uh, 2007, uh, you know, he unalived himself. And uh, so the rumor is that the, he made a confession tape that's somewhere out there of him confessing to be this, this one of the shooters in that night. So all that took place right here at the Veterans Memorial Building in uh, 6th Street in Antioch, California. It's funny because I've been here multiple times over the years because you can rent out this hall for events and whatnot, and I never knew any of that took place. But you know, back in the 90s, the whole gang thing was really big. Uh, listen to the lyrics of a lot of those songs, but a lot of it references all these events. I grew up around here and I heard about these things secondhand. It's kind of interesting to see like, these half actually happened at real locations. Now I'm gonna go down, now this is where we're gonna start to be in kind of an unsavory area to where they actually used to hang out at. This has been bad as long as I can remember. This is 19th Street here, and this loops around into 20th Street right up here. So this is where their stomping grounds is right here on the 20th Street. You want a reliable transportation because I don't really want to have my, uh, I don't really want to have this thing stop through here. So I believe they hung out their stomping grounds is one of these apartment complexes right here. One of these two apartment complexes is where they would always hang out at. And the funny thing is, is so much bad stuff happened here. I have a friend that grew up right here on the street, right in the heart of all this stuff. And he's like so unaffected by any of it. You'll, you would never know he grew up in like ground zero of all the gang activity in Antioch. He grew up right here on 20th Street. And the only thing he would ever attack you with is like trivial knowledge of like movies and stuff. Oh, the director of this movie made this one and this one. It's just so funny. He grew up right here. And I don't think he had any idea any of that stuff was happening. So this is where it loops around. Yeah, so shout out to my boy Roy, who grew up right here and did not become a product of his environment at all. But yeah, you can start to see here, you know, there's just junk everywhere. And this isn't the best neighborhood. But you can see, yeah, guys, look, we're not in the best neighborhood here. Abandoned houses and stuff, homeless camps everywhere. We're gonna be going down these railroad tracks here, guys. I don't recommend, if you're ever in these areas, I don't recommend you. You can see big homeless camp right there. And what happens with these, a lot of these homeless camps is there'll be dogs, dogs and stuff around. So you gotta be careful. I have flat out in my tires, so I should be good. But yeah, we used to come back here in junior high and stuff. We'd take this short, these uh, the railroad tracks as a shortcut. But you look at it now, like this ain't safe no more. This is a straight up dump. There's just garbage everywhere. We used to cut, cut class here and uh, go underneath this bridge and we would just hang out here. There was no encampments here. That's just crazy, man. Look at all the You go ahead and speed up so I don't get attacked by a dog. So that's exactly what I was saying, guys. Yeah, these areas ain't safe no more. I can't believe how much trash there is. And I can't, I can't believe how good the suspension on this MX-5 is. It just floats over this stuff, it's great. As a matter of fact, I don't wanna be on these railroad tracks anymore. So I'm gonna go ahead and get off the railroad tracks and we're gonna go right into, uh, right in the ground zero of the worst neighborhood in Antioch. So this is Sycamore Square. This is like, uh, not cool they gated it all off i don't know if they lock it at night or what but we'll make a quick little loop through here it's not too bad right now but you can see they had to put these rolling shutter doors here it's just you know tomfoolery going on here at all times as you can see right now yeah so not exactly an area i want to hang out i'll give you a quick little tour of the sycamore square and the services they have to offer and this is sycamore street so these are, the reason I think it's bad through here is this is pretty much all apartment complexes on this stretch. It's apartment complexes on both sides and almost all these streets are either duplexes or apartment complexes. And it's just, uh, you see how they paint, they had to paint all these curbs red because I guess a big problem they had back in the day was uh, people would come here and just park on the side and then do all sorts of stuff. But yeah, just look around guys, this isn't, 
This is not very good. I've, I've been driving my car through here. People will pass me. They just swerve around. If you've come from a place where people act normal and then you hang out in Sycamore, you'll be like, what is going on here? Sadly, you know, you get all these bad neighborhoods and then the benefit of that on my behalf, selfishly, is you see and they don't give a shit about stuff like this because they have like real problems. So if you live in Antioch, you can drive 10, 15 over the speed limit. Nobody cares. Um, yeah, you can get away with a lot of petty stuff in Antioch as a result of there being such bad problems. You see the store, this is Lowe's. They have armed security at Lowe's. I especially notice it if I leave town for a few days. If I go out of town, I come back, so if I go somewhere nice, I come back, I'm like, what the, oh my God, this place is like grimy. It was a small town before, you know, small, 90,000 or so, it's like 110 now. But I swear, it's like they, uh, all the regular, all the regular citizens moved out and it like got backfilled with just bad, bad, bad citizens. Another thing that's sad about this neighborhood is like, I knew people that lived here back in the day, like hardworking families, just trying to get by and they had, they lived on one of these duplexes here. And it's like, so much crap happens in this neighborhood. It just sucks. You're, like, you're trying to raise a normal family and your kids have to deal with the knuckleheads that live in these neighborhoods. And it's just, this place is just terrible. You can't have anything nice in a ghetto area. You, it'll get stolen. You'll get bullied. It's just terrible, guys. It's, you know, I have friends that lived around this stuff and they have like crazy stories and stuff they had to deal with all the time. There's like a 50% chance when you hear the shooting in Antioch, it's within a one mile radius of right here. Actually, I just thought of another it's a totally random story. My friend was leaving this liquor store right here. Uh, probably 2002, 2003. He lived up in this neighborhood here. He was going right here, going straight. A car pulled up next to him, and a passenger in the car was like, what's up, homie? He looked over, the guy had a bandana on his mouth, and the guy in the passenger seat just shot once. My friend was sitting here like this with his arm on the uh, window. The bullet hit the window, ricocheted off of his arm, and then went into the headrest, and then the people drove off. My friend wasn't in a gang. He had no idea who the people were. It was just a total random shooting for no reason whatsoever. And the more I'm telling these stories, the more it makes me want to get out of here as soon as possible. Let's see, what does this sign say here? Antioch Police Facility. I, I think this is the police department, right? And let's go ahead and bomb the stairs at the police department. What do you say? We're getting close to our next location. I want to point out shortly that this is a Stam Theater here. It's no longer a theater. I believe it's actually a church now. But I saw Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2 there. I saw the Rocketeer. And it's kind of, uh, I always forget, you know, I live in the same place I've lived the majority of my life. I flew a drone through the hole on that sign. We're at our next location here. I don't remember exactly because uh, this happened in 1993, but I believe this was an empty field at the time or perhaps there was houses they tore down. They announced that they were gonna build this place and there was a huge eucalyptus tree here. And one person in particular, a guy named William Leroy, didn't want that to happen. He didn't want them to cut that tree down. So he staged a protest where he climbed that tree and he stayed in that tree. I can't tell you exactly how long it was now, but it was like a week or something, but it was huge news. It was all over the news because he was in the tree and he didn't want to come out and he was doing it. People were giving him food up and down the tree. I was researching this one and I found this one clip, guys, and I want to see if I can find it, where these people tried to get supplies up to him. And it was the funniest thing because these people were just so stupid. They put a ladder on their car and then they drove up there and I don't know, I'll have to try and find that clip. But as you can tell, clearly the eucalyptus tree is no longer there. But that was kind of national news for a while. It was a big deal in Antioch. And that happened right here at the corner of 8th and G Street in 1993. So this is another sad state of affairs. You guys might recognize this. I come out here with my bike reviews, but I kind of stopped doing it recently because you notice right here, there's a trench cut through the ground right here. And that's because there were some copper wires. You could see a little bit sticking up in parts. And some guy came out here and dug up all this area right here. 
to steal those copper wires. And he left some of his evidence behind. Here, look at that. All these needles and a bottle. I saw him here in action and a shovel. So can you imagine the amount of work this guy did just to pull up that copper wire? I can't even imagine how much money he got for it. Tom Foolery going on on these tracks over here. Whether it be stolen vehicles or people who are walking around with knives. And most of the time I'm out here alone, so yeah, it's nice. I can just ride by. I don't, you know, good luck trying to catch me, but there's just all sorts of weirdness going on out here. And you gotta be on your uh, on guard at all times. In other news, this Tolari MX-5 makes a suspension is just amazing. The suspension on this is so much better than that E-Ride, it's like not comparable at all. This just glides over all this bad, bumpy stuff. You can tell it's absorbing all the bumps, but you're not, it's not getting transmitted through the seat. So it makes my uh, getaways much easier. A little lesser known history, pretty random, but this place right here is called Sam's Liquor. And uh, I lived up the street from here growing up, and we used to sit out right out here in front of this place. And I smoked cigarettes when I was a kid. I was like 15, 14. And I would sit on that the, the curb right there and just ask people as they walked in, like, hey, can I get a spot? And we could even get alcohol too. And just randomly, random people would be like, sure. We'd give them our money and they'd go buy a 14 or 15 year old kid cigarettes or alcohol. And I think about that now as an adult. And I think that's just so bizarre to me. Like if I was walking into a, a liquor store and some kid was like, hey, let me get some, we buy me some cigarettes or alcohol? Like, no, absolutely not. I will not buy you alcohol. You know, sometimes it takes 15 minutes, sometimes it takes an hour, but we'd always get it done somehow. But you know, the homeless population would come through in those times of need a lot. Okay, have you guys ever asked for a spot? All right, guys, this house right here, I'm gonna try and not bring too much attention to myself, is definitely Antioch's 100% most notorious location. Behind me is the house that used to belong to Philip Garrido. Now, you may not recognize that name right away, but I'm pretty sure you've heard the story. In 1991, J.C. Lee DeGard was waiting for a bus in uh, South Lake Tahoe when she was kidnapped by Philip Garrido. This was, uh, she was missing for years and years and years. It was Philip Garrido and his wife who lives in that house behind us. She, they took her from Lake Tahoe to this house here. And what you can't see here, and I'm sure it's all been cleared out, but behind the house, there was a, a series of storage sheds and uh, units that he soundproofed. And she was held captive here all the way up until, I believe, 2006 or seven. I'd have to double check that. But what's crazy about this story is this is all within a couple miles of where I went to school. And I had friends that lived right in this whole neighborhood. And uh, she was the same age as us. This happened in 1991. She was in sixth grade. I was in sixth grade. So we were within a year of each other. My whole time growing up, all these stories I've told you in this video all took place while she was held captive here. She had two kids from him. She was actually even being taken around with them in public. Uh, she had a fake name and uh, eventually they went to UC Berkeley and I forget what happened, but it was like a series of failures from the probation department and everything that she wasn't found earlier, but that all happened at that house right there. Her entire life was stunted since 1991 to like 2007, and it's just weird because all of our lives were going on like normal, with just in a couple miles of here, and we had absolutely no idea that any of that stuff happened. Very sad story, but since then, she's been reunited with her family. She's alive at least. She has the rest of her years to live out. Emotional damage beyond any of our wildest comprehension has happened to her, but that all happened right there. Yeah, I'm playing some Woody now as I ride around town. If you look on YouTube, it's, a, it's got a huge underground following. Now this parking lot here is another place that's just terrible. It has its ups and downs. It actually looks like it's somewhat cleaned up right now. One of my range test videos on my wired cruiser, I came through here and there's gunshots in my video. Oh wow. That was a man firing a gun into the area. And I would definitely be beelining it. Oh, here you can see part of what I'm talking about. There's people over there just yelling at me. I think they're literally playing craps right there. So, you know, it's not just from movies, guys. This stuff happens in real life. Yeah. 
This place has just changed so much from when we were kids. I've seen about enough. And now right across the street right here is where the gunshots were in that uh, range test video I did. I didn't have time to get scared at all. I just heard it and I was like, oh wow, there's gunshots right now. I hear gunshots a lot, but I don't actually see it. And I actually saw the guy firing the gun that time. He was just shooting it in the air. I don't know the backstory behind it at all, and I wasn't about to go ask. It ain't all sunshine and roses out here in Antioch, guys. All right, guys, here we are. This is a scene of another uh, infamous event that took place in Antioch in November 1998 at another quinceanera. Rehearsal for a quinceanera take place here. Young girl is 15 or 16-year-old Lisa Norell. Supposedly an argument took place or something happened, and uh, she left here and proceeded to walk to her home in Pittsburgh. Now, her home in Pittsburgh a direct shot down this road is probably five or six miles. It's a long walk. It was cold. I believe they said it was raining that night. She started walking from here all the way into Pittsburgh. Her adopted mom woke up and realized she never came home. Uh, she was missing. Approximately one week later, they found her body in a nav land, which is an agricultural supply place. And as of today, they still don't know who did it. It's, it's, uh, it's an unsolved mystery. They had some suspects involved in the case, if you can read into it. But uh, it sounds like they didn't have enough evidence or whatever happened, guys. I'm not an expert. I'm repeating what's public record. And uh, so that one is completely, it's still to this day, it's unsolved. This is where she was last seen alive, right here. I actually made a video on this one before I started doing the e-bike stuff. And ironically enough, some of the people like with ties to the case started contacting me and reaching out to me and it just got weird so i actually pulled that video down uh not so not you know not the group of people i want to start getting involved with so yeah the suspects there's two suspects we took them in for questioning nothing ever happened of it but hey you know infamous antioch event took place right here or at least started right here you know it just sucks the, since then her adopted mother has passed away you know, it's been well over 20 years now. It's just sad that they've never found. She never got any closure. A lot of questions with that one, and I hope someday maybe they'll figure out who did it and get some answers, but darker part of Antioch history. But anyways, this next place we're gonna go is another one. This one made huge nationwide news. All right, guys, so here we are, about five miles down the road from the, the party hall where Lisa Norell was last seen is, at the time, this place was called Navland. Now it's called Site 1. It's a landscape supply. And her body was found, I don't know exactly where, but it said on the side of this building. Raised questions where, was she here the whole time? Did somebody bring her body here later? You know, I mean, this is 1998. We're not going to know the answers that now. But this is where she was found. And the running theory is she was walking home from the concert hall, from the party hall. Somebody picked her up and then what happened happened. I'm not going to go into details. It sucks that no one has ever found for that, and I'd hope that, you know, advancements in DNA technology and stuff like that, we could find out who did it by now. That happened right here, and this is where she was found. It's scary to think that there's people in the world that would do something like that. All right, well, there you have it, guys. I think that's going to conclude today's tour of Antioch, some of the more infamous locations, a lot of real events that were talked about in this video. Um, so rest in peace and all respect to the people that are, you know, individuals affected by these stories and the people that are no longer with us. But as always, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, and we'll catch you in the next one. Peace.